time for Lip Flory. This week's show, post shading and dry brushing the Tiger. We've got some reviews for you. This week we've got the Special Hobby 148 Scale Airspeed Oxford Mark II. We've got a new section which will hopefully help solve some of your problems and uh, so I'll be answering some of your questions on airbrushing and the tools that I use. We'll also talk about the completed builds that we've got at the moment. So obviously we're talking about the Seaport and the F15 which we've got here. So first up, um, obviously busy week this week. Uh, haven't actually had time to start on the Wing Nut Wings kit. I've been busy with the tutorials. Now the new tutorial section which I'm working on at the moment will hopefully update uh, to make everything work a lot smoother. I know some of you at the moment are having trouble with iPads because only half of the videos work with iPads because they were done in the last century in some cases, literally. Um, but a lot of them were sort of done uh, around about 2005, things like that. They're really out of date, they're really corny. So those are getting scrubbed, okay, completely and put up to date with these new HD ones. So the first one that is up there this week talks about glues. Now it's really basic and I know it sounds simple, but if you are coming back to it, you know, we don't use this stuff anymore, the old poly stuff. Um, it's still got its place in the hobby and I explain all about that. We also talk about different types of glues and their usage. So we talk about like the contact type glues, the hot action type glues, these weld ones like Tamiya Extra Thin, Mr. Surfacer, and the more specific ones like Mech Weld and stuff like that. And we have a run around this little net with it to show exactly how they work. So that one's about 15 minutes long. Then we move on to filler um, and basically the different types of putties and fillers that are out there, when to use them, not to use them. And to be honest, we used it on this bit of wing here and I showed about masking up to protect areas and using your standard type of putties, your precision putties, using super glue uh, as a filler as well, which works great. Um, and then, but basically, you know, shrinkage when why does it happen you get shrinkage and sometimes you actually get shrinkage coming higher as well it doesn't always just dip down sometimes it swells up uh, and how to avoid it things like that um, then, then we'll move on to obviously we'll be doing sanding and things like that some of the tutorials are absolutely fine I still think a good quality they're all in HD they're the later ones certainly thing on like a canopy polishing things like that so what we'll be doing though is having a system where you've got a lot of thumbnails so if you ever go to the video build section, you'll know what I mean. So you'll click on it, it'll take you to a page called, let's just say, filler. Okay, and in there, what I've done is I've got a situation where you've got underneath the, the watch the video, and then I've got some useful links. So I might say, you might want to have a look at, to be honest, I'll talk about it in a moment, is Seahawk Part 2, which is a complete nightmare on filling. And it's got a lot of filler work, and I explain different ways, but you can actually see it being used in that scenario. So it's not like it's a bit fake and we're doing it on a bit of you know, wing here. So that way, it's just, you might want to take a look at and have a, a, a watch of part two of the Seahawk video and other ones. And as I sort of think of them and go back and have a look and, you know, so you can actually go back and see them being used in you know the actual real life if you like and things like that so that way it'll just be a bit more reference to it and everything else like that and I also think if there's things on the forum I'll link them into the forum as well so you can actually catch them in there as well so it should make everything a lot more interactive a lot easier um, than obviously just seeing them in a build because I know a lot of you don't watch the full builds that we do every time so if it's not your cup of tea perhaps you're not into armor you're not into modern jets you might not see it but I try and do all the techniques uh, and certainly bring something new to every single video build that we do so consequently if you never watch the shuttle for instance which was a complete filler trip underneath that I can tell you um, you would have missed using things like super glue for your filler and everything else during that build so that will be up this week. Uh, I'll talk about it fully next week when I get the rest of them in there. Uh, I've got a lot of them filmed at the moment, but obviously I've got to edit them all up. I've only done editing actually for two so far this week. As soon as we get the rest of them all done, we can move through with that. Other things on going on at the moment, we've finished obviously the F15, the last part of that is up on the site. It's only about 20, 25 minutes with a reveal as well. Um, and what can I say? Fantastic, thoroughly enjoyed it. Really lost the mojo going halfway through this build. Came back to it. And it's one of those builds where all of a sudden I sort of got really sort of excited about it and moved through and enjoyed doing the weathering and everything else like that. We use different techniques on this one I haven't used before, or I have, but many, many moons ago, like using Tamiya weather insects, haven't done that, um, and go through to really bring it up to a fantastic aircraft. I'm really, really happy to have it on my display shelf. The other one at the moment is part one of the Skyhawk. Um, Seahawk, even Skyhawk, Seahawk build, uh, the helicopter. Um, that one is being painted at the moment over there uh, and everything else, so you can watch that one. As I said, it's a speed build, so in part one, I think we build the entire thing. Part two is gonna be about filling and everything else. Part three is doing the paintwork, so it's not gonna take long to get this one done. Um, specific areas we're concentrating on this particular speed build is doing filler, so obviously, 
plays in with this week's work. Okay, and then um, really about camo. It's grey. Let's face it, it's just going to be grey all over. I'm going to show you how to weather stain, bleach, and smoke effects and oil effects on that one a little bit later during the build. So, a couple of things we do need to mention. Uh, first of all, in the forum, the guys have been talking to Graphic Air and I've been speaking to them as well, and they've sorted us out a great price for members to get a discount on this said very spray booth here and the other version, which is the plastic version, but trust me, you want this one. Okay, they are not cheap. They are, what, 280 pounds with the VAT in the UK? It's free delivery, that's a lot of money, but we have managed to get a great price. Uh, thank you to Mike over at Graphic Air for talking to us. I spoke to him on the phone yesterday as well. Um, really nice people I've been dealing with them and as you all know you've probably seen the videos there's videos on that one all over my site the new show we've talked about filters and everything else on that it is a very expensive piece of kit you know it's 300 quid all right but it's one of those things you're going to have forever and also from a health point of view uh, and it has been brought up in the forum I don't use it enough especially like when we did the tiger here I sprayed it no mask no nothing okay it should have been over there and from now on I that's it, I am not doing any more spraying here because quite frankly, it makes a mess of the studio as well because there's dust everywhere. That thing catches all dust, all sprays, um, any vapors in the air, any smells, it just hoovers the entire lot out of the place. It is very, very worth the money. So if you're not with us, but also go and have a look at Graphic Air. Um, as I said, it's the, I think that's the A300S series, that one. Um, it's a fantastic bit of kit and uh, well worth the investment. So if you want to get on with that one, that's great. A um, Couple of things we need to talk about is we've got uh, two weeks left on the Tamiya out of the box uh, group build. Don't forget, he hasn't got one here but medals will go out to everybody on this and um, I've never known so many people to take part in this actual one it's fantastic you really will taking this one to heart and you're building everything from the 72nd series right up to the big stuff as well um, and everybody has really really enjoyed it it is a fantastic one it's gonna take me forever to do the reveal video I'm gonna have to set up a week to do that to get everyone's names and everything in there but as I said it's fantastic brilliant job um, we'll talk about it lots and lots when it's over but you've really got now three weeks left on that it's going to finish on March the 17th, all right? So really, if you are, you know, a little bit away from pushing through on that one, time to really get on with it, get it finished and everything else. Other things we've got, up, uh, you've got two weeks left only on the Century Series Jets SIG. Um, that's going to finish on the 3rd of March, so you really want to push forward with that one, get that one sorted out. Uh, even quicker ending, you've got until Sunday is the North Africa um, SIG. It said Sunday on that one. I do apologise, I should have mentioned it last week. Uh, that's going to be replaced on starts tomorrow uh, by the World War II Eastern Front SIG and it's going to run to the 16th of June on that one, all right? So you've got plenty of time. Just to recap, because everyone tends to forget, SIGs, no prizes. You all just get a pat on the back and a reveal video at the end, okay? Group builds have the prizes. A lot of people, I get lots of PMs and emails saying, I didn't get one. Well, we don't do them for that, okay? Group builds get the SIGs, and there's normally something else, prizes involved. Um, there is prizes with the, the Tamiya one as well, which I've got to see myself, okay? Uh, and everything else. So they're the ones who get the prizes. The SIGs really are just a little bit of fun. And don't forget, I get a lot of people saying about, oh, you don't do this, you don't do this. Um, but the thing is, if you want to do one, and there's a couple of you on the site, you can always do it as a buddy build in the forum, okay? So at the moment, Stefan's doing the colossal Bismarck 1200 tam uh, trumpeter one. Um, and as I said, it is a buddy build. So if you're planning on building one as well, you can join them in there. We'll move your posts and threads, everything in there to that section. So you have your own section in the forum to do it. So if you've got a couple of you who fancy doing a specific type of thing by all means I will set it up for you in the forum and you can have your own section of the forum to do that um, and then obviously if you just want to build one off your own back just go ahead and do it we've got the gallery section which I'll be making a lot more of I'm going to be using them on it with your permission of course onto Facebook putting the pictures up on there and then obviously we'll be talking about them at the end of the show as well as you'll see so you know don't think everyone's being left out everyone is still on there Two things I have to mention. First of all, thank you for everyone tidying up your signatures at the bottom of your post and keeping them all nice and small. Brilliant job, looks so much better. It's so easy to scroll now, especially if you're on a tablet. You can just flick now. Instead of having to go for miles, uh, it's absolutely great. Um, secondly, I do have to mention the Facebook page. We've almost got a 1,000 people on there. 
which is pretty good, but apart from when you think, obviously there's a lot of you guys are missing out on it as well, because it is part of the Flora Model site. There are some photos got there earlier. If you hadn't seen it, this the photo of this went up there last week, uh, completed, because um, unbeknownst to you, behind the scenes, when I finished filming the new show, I carried on for the rest of the afternoon and just finished it off. Uh, those pictures all went up to Facebook, and we've almost got a 1,000 people, which isn't bad, because we've only had it open a couple of months. Um, so if we can get over a 1,000, it'd be great. So when the rest of the members all join, we should be up to 3,000, uh, and away we go. So it'd be brilliant to get you all on there. So, first up, this little thing, as I said, had a lot of fun with it, and when the cameras finished last week, I decided just to carry on, let the cameras roll, and we weathered this entire thing to this standard in under three hours, which isn't bad when you think we went from that horrible paint scheme we had to more to this in three hours. It just shows how quickly it all comes together. So here's a look what happened. Okay, now I know you've left me uh, live on the new show, but I'm just going to carry on and show you a few little extra bits we're going to do. Okay, so you might be able to see I've also sprayed the wheels down the bottom. No problem at all anywhere. Paintwork is nice and smooth, everything else like that. So what we're going to do, I've still got some of this green paint in here. And to be honest, this is the other problem. There's not enough air pressure in the Neo to push that out. And quite frankly, it is sort of doing my head in just a little bit. So what we're going to do, we're going to switch over to uh, my trusted harder and steam bake for this. Okay. And what we're going to do, make sure we're working all okay. That's a lot better. All right, so we're just going to take some uh, flat black. And we're just going to weather up. A little bit now you might remember when we first had this one all painted it had this black marking all over it now whilst it wasn't exactly uh, authentic it does help break up what is quite a big lump because the trouble with this now the paintwork just looks a little bit flat and a little bit sort of you know sort of blocky and chunky and that's purely because of its size as well so what we'll do now is do really what they did in the factory and put that back on which will help break it up it'll help mottle it down and we can go around and put some black areas in certainly around the back I've got to repaint it up again but it will just help sort of move things along just a little bit now to be honest that black paint there is nasty for want of a better word so we'll just grab another one okay so hopefully this black will be a lot better almost <laughs> okay what we'll do we'll take quite a bit of thinners into here so we've got in here if you're looking at us one mil of thinners gone in here and to be honest see this paint isn't much better at all okay we'll just take a bit of the gooey mess that is a bit tarry paint Okay, and we're just putting it in here. Now what we want it to do is to act, as I say, like a staining type situation. So we don't want it to be too strong. So what we're going to do is just thin that down a little bit more. So I'm going to put about half a mil of thinners because we'll use it up on this. Okay, right the way around. Okay, so when you put it on the side of your colour cut, it holds its colour, then fades away. Alright, so what we'll do... We're literally just going to pop over as they did in the factory. So, nice airflow, nice air pressure. So what I'm going to do, I'm really just going to pick out the lines it had before. So obviously we had these ones running down here, all in these. So we're going to do them again. I'm not going to worry too much about getting it on the metal work now. Um, because it, obviously this is stained, but what we don't want to do is to have a situation where we're driving around the carpet on you know, or your deck or wherever you are, leaving black footprints behind where this goes. So what we're going to do, check our flow, happy with that, and literally we're just going to pop in now this in. So we're just going to pop around edges and corners as it did. Okay, I'm just going to turn my air pressure down just a touch, a little bit high. Probably here. <clears throat> okay, so we just pop down this guy. And because it's quite wet, it's not going to affect any too much. So we're just going to put a little bit now across these areas. And, um, you know, don't forget, this isn't going to suddenly, oh my God, look, we've changed it all. But it certainly makes it look a lot better. So we just pop one across here. Okay, and at the same time, we're just going to mottle in. Some little areas all over it. Okay, hatches. 
So we're just putting in some little squiggles just to help break it up. And then when we get to lines and things like that, we're gonna come back and put them all in. So we're just gonna go around the hatch. Anywhere that's got cleats and stuff, gonna get a bit of this. So really, all we're doing, as I said, is what was there before, and we're putting it all back in. So when we come in in a moment, we'll have that nice effect again. Okay, but it'll just help to, to break it up and make it look a bit better. So, and again. Okay. Area around the back here on the grill, anything on these engines. Okay, now we are going to put in washes and various things into this, so don't worry too much about that. So all we're trying to do is cause this sort of staining effect into everything. So around these hatches at the rear, getting quite a bit obviously. And then what we do, we're just going to follow it around. Roughly as it ended. So anywhere that's got a corner. Okay, back area. Over these vents, grills, things like that, all getting quite a lot. So we're just going to squirt some heavy bits on anywhere there's like a hole or a vent or anything else like that. going round just oiling up these wheels because this will just act like a, a grimer into them take them down a bit a little bit heaviness over the lot okay so what we do is just give it a final rinse down so quite a bit of thin has gone onto this the other thing you have to remember is when you're doing this don't um, get too close to it or anything for a good hour afterwards because otherwise what can happen is obviously by spraying thinners all over it you're a acrylic paint you've got on there already it can actually soften it up and you can leave fingerprints and all types of nasties in there so you've got basically this in here it's you know basically like dirty thinners for want of a better word what this will do is grime everything up so quite a high air pressure and all we're going to do is literally right over the entire thing especially the back area areas at the back down the front and this will hopefully just blend it all together a bit. Okay, it'll help it in the, the zermit. Also, it'll take care if you've got any clean spots. Okay. So you just need to dull this all down a minute. There we go. And that is in there. The other thing we've got to do is obviously I'll fire this up in a moment, move the turret round and get into it. So that's about it. What we're going to do then, let that totally dry off, okay? Let it stand for then sort of 24 hours, something else like that. Then we're going to come in and we're going to wash straight over the top of this. We're not going to put in flat coats and everything else. It's quite textured as it is, but I reckon then we can put a wash right the way over this, which will really bring it to life. It'll grime it down, everything else like that. As soon as it's had the wash on, then we can start going around detailing it up and take care of all the 
the, the little bits and pieces like around hatches, obviously areas we've now sprayed in of tools, equipment, things like that. All that chain work that goes on here, everything else like that to really sort of bring it to life. And then we can go around in the intricate detail of let's say metalizer paints to bring some of this heavy duty metal to life, certain scratching, scraping, smoke effects, some damage, things like that. Okay, still to come up, we've got questions. We're going to be talking airbrushing, bubbles and metallic cups, split nozzles, and a few of my tools that I use here. We've got part two of the Tiger, where we'll be talking about dry brushing in detail, using three colours of dry brushing to really bring it to life before the wash goes on. We've got a review of the special um, Hobby 148 scale Airspeed Oxford, and we've got all your builds coming up at the end of the gallery. Okay, so I was skimming through the forum this week, and I know I don't talk on it as much as I should, but obviously now with everything going on, it's absolutely manic here. Um, but sometimes I see some of you guys on there, and I try and help, and sometimes you think, God, if only I could get the video and to show you all about it. One of those scenarios this week was um, one of the guys was getting air bubbles in his colour cut, and it's really hard to explain exactly why that is um, when you're talking about it. Really, what it is is just that air is escaping back up the top. The way that it actually works, and this is a dirty one here to, to show you. Okay, if we can get the end off. If we just take quickly apart our oh, airbrush here. All right, needles stuck in. All right, um, what you actually have is a situation where you might be able to see it down the bottom where the air hole is on the airbrush. So this area down in here, Okay, you might be able to see on the, the top side on here, there's a little gap and the air rushes down. And then what happens is it goes down the outside of the nozzle section here. Okay, it gets to the end and then it shoots off on the needle. Okay, and what it is, it draws the paint with it as it actually goes and atomizes. Now the trouble is, if this seal at the back, okay, is not completely flush against here, it allows air to come in around this rear seal here, which then comes up where your needle is and then obviously bubbles out the top of your actual airbrush itself thus making a massive mess. And if you have seen a few of my outtake shows and things like that, you would have seen where it's done to me and covered me in paint more than times I can remember. Okay, so if we just try and reenact what I'm talking about. So what happens is, you just have, let me just put this down a bit before I spray everything, because it's bound to go for miles. But if you actually take your airbrush cleaner, okay, so you have it in your, your airbrush and you normally, you've got no problem with your spray at all, it's coming out. But if I loosen off this front just a little bit, as you can see, you get this effect where it's blowing it out. So I'm just trying to save me model getting covered. But what it is, if you tighten it up, you can stop that from happening, no problem at all. But all it is, is literally a tiny little air gap in there. Now, there's a couple of things that it could be. Okay, first of all, just make sure the nozzle is completely as tight as it will go. So just make sure you got hold of the front and it is absolutely fine, all right? Second thing you want to do, if it is, is check two little items. The first one, here we are. This is talking harder and steam better, but everybody's airbrush is roughly the same. Okay, we've got a little O-ring seal on this guy just around here. Okay, so you just want to make sure that that's absolutely tip top, that it's not pinching, that it's not perished, anything else like that, because without it, it allows air, it doesn't sit properly. Okay, then the other thing is, make sure you've got no cracks or anything in the little air cap here on the end, because if this Teflon ring has got a split, that will also let air through as well. Okay, so by having those all fine, you should have no trouble whatsoever. Okay, whilst we're talking about it, I was going to show you, but it will never be able to see it. One of the guys was saying, when he uh, is fully depressed forward, okay, when you push down, you're still getting paint come out, okay, without pulling back on the trigger. What tends to happen is check your nozzle very, very closely that you haven't got a split on the end. If you've got a tiny split, what happens is the needle can't fill the hole, because all that does, the needle goes forward and blocks the hole on the front, okay? 
And, but if there's a split, and then when you push for air, it only lets a little bit, but it continuously flows out. So have a good check of the end of your nozzle. Now, to be honest, this nozzle here is getting quite old. It's beginning to little splay out a little bit anyway, because my needle's going forward, but it hasn't got a split, so you can still use it. But if you've got a split on the side, to be honest, I have got one, but as I said, the camera will never get it, um, then it will let it through. Hence, that's why you're still getting paint coming through, even though you're not pulling back whatsoever. So check your nozzles, replace them as required. Now last up is Perry on the site was saying that he had, and we've covered this before, but we'll have a, a recap. He was basically saying that what happens is when he pushes down for air, in fact if I just pop this together I might be able to recreate it. If I just pop this in, stick this in the end. Do that. Okay, instead of it being nice and sharp, okay, you should literally let it go and it stops. So obviously if you push down a little bit, you get a little bit of air. The more you push, you see, things like that. But he was saying that what happens is, it's always the way, you can never make it to. What happens is sometimes you push down, okay, and the air runs on. It sort of comes off really slowly. Okay, what this actually is, the nipple on the top of your air stem. This is what we call the air stem, this part, okay? Now you've got this little nipple at the top, should be really free and springy. Now in here you can see I've got a white um, little disc. It's a Teflon seal, okay? So it's not affected by any nasties such as, obviously, cellulose thinners, lacquer thinners, things like that, okay? But if you've got a rubber one in there, sometimes if you get a little bit of thinners comes back up in this area, or you over tighten it, so i.e. you might be able to see down in there, I have got actually a tiny bit okay, uh, red paint just down in here, I, which here the camera hangs on it, and that's where the paint from my seal has come off and stuck to that bit because it is so tight. Okay, all you have to do to stop that from happening is very slightly slacken off this air stem, this section here, the entire part, off of this bottom, if you just release it, and when I say a little bit, we are talking microscopic, you wouldn't believe what difference it makes, but literally you just unscrew it just the tiniest, tiniest amount, and then that way you should have no problem at all, but always the way, I can't recreate it, because it's Teflon seals that don't swell, but I have had it happen in the past, and I have explained it on other news shows, but literally, I think they're about seven quid for a full seal set for one of these, so invest in one of those, you get a couple of those Teflon seals anyway, and you can replace that one in there, and that just stops that from running on and causing problems just like that. Now, other question was about my blade set. This is it, this is my little dispenser, okay? I just bring out the top cam. Okay, this little guy here, um, to be honest, I picked it up in a hardware store and I can't remember exactly where I got it from. And obviously it was made in China because it has got no reference to anybody's maker's name on it anywhere, okay? But we just got this one on here, it's called Persona Pro, okay? But actually what's really nice with this one is you press it and it pops up a straight edge razor blade, just like that, which is really, really handy. Um, obviously you've got a cover on one side, but they're just ready to go, okay, and you've seen me, the guy we were talking about sharing about photo etch bending, that's actually what it was, okay. Once you've done with it, normally, like what you do with it, ends up in the bin, okay, but these go back in the little storage area at the rear of it and keeps it all nice and safe. Great thing as well, it's got screws on the back, if you wanted to, you could then just pop it in, and screw it to a shelf or something else like that, and then when you wanted a new blade, you can just pop it out, and then when you're finished, you can just pop them in the top, and you're good to go like that. Very, very handy tool, and I think I paid around about £4.99 for it. But as I said, that was it. But say so I just picked up a little hardware store. If I have a look a little bit later, I've got time, I'll have a hunt around and see if I can find a link for you. But as I said, really, really handy, very nice, keeps everything safe, and you don't end up cutting your hands off and things like that. Okay, so this week's review, um, something a little bit different. This is Special Hobbies 148 scale um, Airspeed Oxford Mark 1 and 2. Um, what struck me about this one is obviously it's not your mainstream type kit, as you can imagine. Um, pretty much don't see this one by anybody else's make. And then say it is in nice because it's got the early war um, RAF green and brown with the yellow, the train yellow underneath. So nice markings as well. So if we have a quick nuke in the box, if we can get it open. <laughs> 
Okay, so what do we get in the box? We get a little thing of instructions. Okay, quite basic, as you can imagine. Um, special hobby. Uh, no, they're not um, your mainstream kit manufacturer. You might not even heard them before. They tend to do your more sort of unusual type um, projects, things like that. But as I said, they do do some nice conversions as well, things like that. So anyway, breakdown of all the parts, as you can imagine. Uh, the cockpit, as you, well, as you say, with special hobbies you'll see in a moment, you get little bits of photo etch, things like that as well, which are great because it really adds detail to the inside. But as you can see, it doesn't take long to come together. It's just a lot of parts in separate builds. Um, and as you can see, it looks to go all together very, very nicely. Go through the aerials, the different areas, things like that. The different markings as well. So as I said, we've got nice colour call outs. Uh, colour call lights are all in Gun Sanyo range, and you'll make your way through. So, what do you actually get in the box? Okay, we actually have, let's move that one over there, a little bag, and then in here we have clear parts, which to be honest aren't that clear. Okay, but then dipping them into a clear gloss will help immensely, but I won't bother getting them out, but they seem to be quite nicely moulded. It's raised moulding on the actual uh, clear part, so it's quite easy to mask because you can put your tape over, scribe round it, and then cut them out, so that's quite nice in there. Uh, a few little aerials and dome marks like there. We have a little bag of resin, detailed areas, which we'll see in a moment, which is a very nice touch. So we've got things down here like air scoops, Unfortunately, they're quite shallow. It'd be nice if they went right the way in. Uh, and then details, so we've got the gun down in there, exhaust, things like that. So that's quite a nice little touch. So, on the sprues. Sprues themselves, we've got very nice smooth moulding. We've got nice ribbing texture going through, showing the ribs on the end. We have recessed, very fine recessed panel lines. You have to imagine, this is a very old plane. Okay, and uh, obviously it's dope skin onto it as well. So that hence why you've got your ribbing effect and there's no riveting detail all over it and things like that. It's a little bit before that. Okay, we've got nice detail on the floors and everything else. So we've got, again, recessed panel lining on that. Instrument panel, crude, but obviously it's there. Little bit of flash on the yokes and things, but nothing you would get excited about. Interior detail, okay, we've got some hefty ejector pin marks and raised ejector pin marks, which are obviously easier to deal with than when they're sunk. Uh, but we've got ribbing down in the inside of the kit. Again, imagine it like a limited run kit. You don't get all the niceties you do with the big boys doing it, but certainly you do get very, very nice detail. The other thing you will notice you are missing completely on this kit is any locating pins anywhere, which is another sign of limited run kits that you don't get those parts on there. But we've got your seats all in there. We've got bulkheads, framing, things like that. Again, very nice. So, moving through, we've got the tailplanes. Again, we've got some nice ribbing showing through, which would be nice to weather up, things like that. Riveting is nice, crisp and clean. Again, recessed panel lines. The undercarriage, okay, admittedly, it's a little bit heavy. Uh, it'd be nice to have it a little bit uh, finer as you make your way through. Again, some hefty ejector pins, but you you know, again, we'll, you can bypass that. You can forgive them for that when it's on limited run. Okay, engine detail. Uh, yes, you've got some nice, pretty heavy on the flash around it again, but no problems really, you can take care of that. The wheels are nicely moulded. Uh, the propellers lead a little bit of work, to be honest. They're a little bit uh, crude around the edges. Um, you've got some lumps and bumps out of the actual props themselves. But again, quite a nice kit. We've got some little mouldings going around, just checking to make sure everything's nicely moulded. As I say, a little bit of flash, but I will forgive. I know I have a go at other companies for flash, but that's because they're big and have a go. Now this is the nice bit, this is a nice touch. What we've actually got here is the wing section. So if we bring you down a bit, you might be able to see we've got this raised detail going along here, these strengthening panels on tops of the wings that go through. We've got riveting detail. It's nice, it's sharp, it's crisp. We've got no signs of sink marks or anything else like that. We have got a tiny little blemishes in the tops of the wings. There's one just over here, but to be honest, I am now picking, all right? It's just that obviously it's got something left in the mold, but we've got no flash on here whatsoever. And it does look very, very nice. Very clean kit. For limited run, cleanness is, you know, something you don't really get. Uh, but this one is exceptionally clean. It's a beautiful little kit. 
So yeah, absolutely, I think that's absolutely fantastic. So as you say, you've got all your, your parts down in here. I thought, to be honest, there was a fret, a photo etch. Here it is. So I was just getting a little bit worried there, it wasn't in the kit. So actually down in here, if we just whip this open, we have various numbers, which is quite a nice touch. It's always a nightmare getting these out of the bag. Sorry, Peter. Okay, so we've got markings. Okay, they're a little bit blurry, um, if you're being a bit picky on these. They're not exactly the best in the world, uh, but again, they're okay. They are individually printed, so you don't have to cut around them or anything else. We've got nice detail on the actual main ones. I can't see any sign of uh, being out of line or anything else. Masking sets, always handy for something like this, which has got obviously turrets. Okay, so that saves a lot of masking. So you've got a nice masking set there. It's all pre-cut. And again, and this is the bit I was looking for. This is our little photo etch part. So we've got things like harnesses, nice touch, belt buckles, things like that. Gun sights, uh, and I think this is seat detail down in there. So again, very, very nice. So I have to say, limited run kits, I know a lot of people shy away from them and you think, oh, special hobby, Ugh. but I tell you what, that actually is a very, very nice kit. That would be a pleasure to build. It's one of those real nice ones to do. Okay, so there you go, special hobby, uh, Airspeed Oxford, uh, 148 scale. Lovely kit, go out and buy it. Okay, so next up, dry brushing the tank. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so there we go, post shading uh, all done. It's not as strong as that original one it had on there before. We've kept it quite muted and settled down, but really that's the type of uh, effect I'm more after. We're gonna bring it more to life with things like dry brushing, which we're gonna do next, to sort of bring all the details, the raised edges, and help to break it up generally, okay? Then after that, we're gonna come in with washes to sort of go round. So with the two areas, anything that's raised, you know, hatches, things like that, the tops of them are gonna get that sort of worn off, scrape look to it, break it up, but then it's gonna get a ring of dirt underneath which will then accentuate all the details and hopefully make them all pop out, stand out. Then we can come in after all those are done and sealed in and take care of things like chipping, metal effects and stuff like that, which are really the sort of final touches. But already doing it like this has totally changed the appearance of the tank, making it look a lot more I don't know, heavier, it seems to give it a more weighted, more in scale look than what it had before. So, dry brushing is basically, um, as what it is, you're basically putting down dry paint onto your model. When we say dry paint, if you haven't done this before, if we just get a bit of kitchen roll here, what you're actually trying to do is take all the paint off of the brush, leaving the bare amount, which is basically dry. So when you're going on, you scrape off this dry paint, we sort of grinds it into the tops of things. So it's not like you're trying to paint anything in particular, you're just trying to liven it all up. Now, um, I know a lot of people, they come along and they drive off with silvers and things like that. To me, far too strong. It's, you know, something you put on as the very last thing is silver things, because you don't tend to see them on, especially heavy armor, okay, and things like that. So for me, I like to use greys. So my obvious choice really in the, um, Tamiya range is to go through, so we've got XF53, we've got XF54, and we've got a little bit of X24, um, and I've also got here a little bit of X53, which is the dark seagull grey, which is, to be honest, very similar to gunship grey, purely because I'm almost at it in Tamiya. So what I tend to do is, we will start with the lighter shade first, so we'll give this a good old mix up in here. Okay, and then what we do, we'll take it off the cap. What we do, we just soak the brush and let it get right up into the bristles. I don't just tap the end, I want the entire thing loaded up until it is completely full up with paint. Then we come over here and we basically rub it out. I'm being careful to sort of get the heavy stuff off the top. So by squashing down the brush, okay, it should take care of that and it stops it storing at the end and then as you're doing it, it flows down before you know it, you go wet again. Then we rub it all off just like so, then we attack the tank with it. So what we'll do is we'll pick up some uh, areas, perhaps down here. We just bring the top gown down a little bit so you can see it a bit better. Okay, so we're gonna use sort of areas like this. All right, <clears throat> so around these front edges on the end, obviously the Zermit is totally different ball game, we to deal with that with the washes. Okay, but what you wanna do is avoid anywhere which is really noticeable to start, because the brush when you start doing it is gonna be quite wet, quite heavy full of it, so you have to do very, very light motions. Okay, so you might think you're not actually doing anything, 
and then all of a sudden it will start to pop out. Okay, so we've got the insides around here. Okay, hatch covers, things like that. Okay, and as it starts to wear down, okay, and quite frankly is wearing off your brush, you can push down really hard then, and what you can do is go over the centers of everything and give it texture down into the actual areas itself on the flat and you can give little scuff marks and things like that. Now remember, it's a, a few fold system on this, so we're just starting down here. But as we work our way through, we just reload, starting to not see it anymore, exactly the same thing again. And on a model this side, it's gonna take quite a bit of time and quite a bit of work. But if we now just flick around here, you might see oh, anything with an edge, anything with a, uh, a high point will get it quite clearly. And on something like this, you think we're actually using gray, it looks like metal. And that's what we're saying, it's all these different things that will give us our textures that we're after. But as I say, when you're doing a model that's quite small, it's not gonna take you long. With something like this, it's gonna take quite a while. So what I'll do, I'm just gonna carry on going round. Remember, the secret of this is, is not to have a, much on the brush. Have as little as possible, okay? And then when you basically stop it, seeing it coming on there, you know you're good to go. But when you start off, just start with somewhere light, okay, to start with. And then we're just going to work our way around. So we're going to go absolutely everywhere around on this particular tank. Sort of really scraping it up. You say, this grey on here looks very, very much like metal. Okay, but we're going to, once you've got not a lot on your brush, you can do this effect. We're going to go right over the top, which acts a little bit like a filter when you're doing it like this on this type of scale. Okay. But it also it will help blend in paint. So there's this tops of hatches. And then by using different greys, we can really build it up. So this is just our first colour, it's quite a light one. Then we're going to come in with a darker grey and take out any areas which are a little bit too strong, things like that, and knock them back. And then finally, we're going to come in with the gunship grey, a very dark grey, to give that effect of scraping and things like that. Let those totally dry, then we can put the wash on. So I'll carry on with this. Okay, so that's the first coat on. Well, look. But uh, it gives us a... Uh, now, certainly a more dulled down, although it does show a slight imperfection, perhaps I should have took care of on top of the turret, which is an original factory run in the paint, which I probably should have taken care of, but uh, we'll never mind that one for the moment. We can always come back and touch that in. Now that's the first coat done, and we've just given it a very light run over, over the, the Zermit as well just to help break it down just a little bit more. So now what we're going to do is come in with uh, the slightly darker colour. So what we'll do, I think we're going to come in with a 53 now. And we're not going to go everywhere with it. We're just going to pick out certain areas where it will have a slightly more weathered sort of hue to it. So again, onto our paper, offloading. So this type of thing, what we're going to do is stick to certain areas. So what we'll do, we we'll do hatches, walkways, things like that. So we're going to avoid side areas and big things, but anything that might have been walked on, or anything else like that, we'll get a bit of this. Now this will give us our basis for chipping and areas like that. So that's why we want to keep this to uh, areas that would have been knocked, as I say, and walked on and things like that, rather than areas that wouldn't have seen much foot action or anything else like that. So we're just going to give the, the top here, because that would have obviously had quite a bit of footfall and scraping. Tops of these packs. Because this, as I say, is just the basis for the chipping one, which will come on afterwards. So we do here. So this important one for this is, is really hatches. So you're just sort of picking out where these areas are to sort of make them stand out a little bit more. Okay, so certainly this area around the back. All right, these engine areas would have got quite a bit. And again, it's just the same technique, just slightly different, okay? <clears throat> and that's what we're trying to do, because just trying to really work it all together, bind it all up, blending in, and things like that. Now, as I say, it's just take your time with it. So, as I say, we just come around hatches and just try and just have a think about where things go.
Okay, so there we go. That's <coughs> showing a little bit more down into there, which is what the type of thing we're after. So our last thing now is to literally come along with the dark gunship grey. Now this literally is just everywhere where you will be having chipping. You don't want to put this anywhere else whatsoever. Okay, so we'll just get a fresh bit of towel here. So this is going to be exclusively for hatches, edges of things, and things like that. It's just, uh, as I say, the chipping is going to be this colour uh, and black, so we don't want to overkill areas. This is just to sort of accentuate areas that are going to be later on getting it. So from our point of view, it's everywhere around hatches only, tops of things. So we just do around the tops of up here. Okay, these guys down here are going to get it. Because this will just give you that worn type of look to your, to your paintwork. And it does look a little bit like scuffing, which is what we'll come along with afterwards. Okay, so that's... Um, Alright, so these obviously front fender areas going to get quite a bit. Remember, keep it light to start with and then darken up afterwards, getting it heavier. And you'll notice if you've got any of those areas where you've overdone it with the lighter dry brushing, it will disappear. It will even turn green in certain lights and things like that. So if you have overdone it a little bit, just give it a little bit of this and it should knock it back just a touch. These ones are just going a little bit around the front. But it's important to knock back and take your time with it and then very gentle to start with and then work it up as you go. As your brush deloads, the paint starts to come off, you can get in there a lot better. Too much, so we just knock it back. Okay, and there we go. So that's what I would call dry brush. Just got to do a little bit around the back, which I'll get in there in a moment. But as I said, let it dry totally off now. So, best thing to do, leave it overnight. Don't put anything over it whatsoever, and we'll come back in the morning and give it a wash. So, talk about difference in scale 148, 116. There you go, they should do these, isn't it? No, perhaps not. Not even my desk would that get on. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching this week. We'll see you again next week. And in the meantime, here's some of your great work.